You are tuning in to the Audible Weed Walk number 55. This is Nina welcoming you. Last week I did not podcast hoping instead I will get to post a video of the Weed Walk. There were some technical glitches which Ruben skillfully has removed. So, it will be released soon on the YouTube channel. Watch out. I start today with a story. A real life story. In Oaxaca, New Mexico, or Mexico, uh, lives a famous Zapotec artist and weaver, Porfirio Gutierrez. He works with natural dyes, dyes that he sources from nature. For him, color is a way to connect to his ancestors, their way of life, which has sustained civilizations and 500 plus years of colonial rule that were set to eliminate this knowledge. The knowledge that is available only by living in symbiosis with nature. So it is not just about the color you see. It is the connection, spirituality with self, with nature. It is like that with anyone or anything one finds a deep connection with. When that is fostered, it does not matter whether it is focusing on color, cordage, medicine, food or building material. It is understood and taken and to be used with care without wasting. I was reading this in an article in BBC online, I think. I I struck a it it struck a chord with me. You know when I read and I'm paraphrasing Gutierrez that um he does not want natural dye to regain its prominence in the textile industry that is very globalized nowadays because that would lead to terrorizing nature for the ingredients. That's a very strong word I must say. but it is appropriate in the context gutrets wants wants us to see that it is possible to have this understanding with nature that she will provide us and in turn that we take only what we need from her i will highlight one more thing that we take uh, for ourselves and our families well for our community when we live in a small but close knit community groups when collecting f- from nature for families and communities there is also a function of collective gathering like um in case of say edible wild food it involves um group foraging you know gathering together not just one person or a few in the group collecting for the others to eat why is that to reiterate color nature medicine or edible greens are only different means to connect with nature what really matters is the bringing our consciousness here and now to our surroundings and to generate a sense of well-being in doing so according to gitres the color gra- the colors um and through the colors he actually found his spirituality and connection to his his ancestral way of life a way of life that involves living with a prop- with appreciation and a sense of inquiry in symbiosis with nature well that was a long story i was reminded of it last week last week i had received a note that a large community kitchen would like to use weed or wild uncultivated green as part of their regular food regime the lowest among uh, amount of need that they had specified is 5 kg per day which they could uh, then incorporate with lentils or dal to serve if one wants a separate preparation of greens then um, the requirement will be much more there have been a large enough area um this community kitchen have a large enough area that they, that they could grow some of the greens on their own eventually but for now they would need to source them from elsewhere likely places are yards gardens fringes garden fringes along the path etc since the collection will be from various places it will also involve multiple people harvesting note i am using the term harvesting and not foraging foraging 
is for self and family. One exception I would include in this category, um, those old ladies, primarily old ladies, who bring their tiny little amount of foraged items to sell outside conventional market you find in most tropical developing countries. Here too, you will definitely find them. Their fare is usually small and they would... Um, they usually don't use any weights. They visually determine some portions and they are usually selling the surplus of their own foraging. They barter amongst themselves, but to the market, they sell for some cash income, but very much at the subsistence level. Whenever the amount is beyond that, it ceases to be foraging in my, uh, in my opinion. Here, to distinguish it from foraging, I am calling it harvesting. So for the community kitchen, it would not be enough if I and others go out and forage enough for myself and a few others. It will need much more. Moreover, it is not like 10, 20 or 50 of us going out in different places and foraging in one time and cooking and sharing the food amongst ourselves. It involves collecting for others who are not at all aware of the source or even how, to pl how the plant looks. Though some of them may be very knowledgeable about edible weeds and that they are rich in nutrition and macronutrients, still, they are not involved in foraging per se. The requirement, even if it is a relatively small amount, like 5 kg, is not one time, but regular. So the question arises, can we sustainably harvest? or deplete the very greens that we appreciate? This is what Guterres, the artist from Oaxaca, mentioned as terrorizing nature for ingredients. But then Oaxaca, Mexico, not New Mexico, Mexico, uh, where he is located is forested, rich in biodiversity. Compare that with the weeds around us. Funny, I thought. But part of me responded, but wild is wild, isn't it? Whether I call it weed, and it also grows in an urban area or not. Overuse will deplete it. May take some more time for it to regenerate. Uh, may take actually less time for it to regenerate than any trees. Can be less devastating uh, for the ecosystem. But um, when a few vanishes, We'll still miss them and it'll still have its impact. What about its uh, effects on soil? It will get uh, bare and depleted. Weeds largely hold the soil together. Not just, um, not just that, it draws up the nutrients um, from, uh, through its root for the other plants to utilize them also. Moreover, weedy, wild, uncultivated greens are absolute magnets for pollinators. Pollinators come for the weedy plants and ends up visiting other plants in the area, including what we cultivate and carefully nurture. The inquiry was a good trigger for a con conversation with myself and others. I was happy that many of the responses um, that I received had also mentioned a similar uh, response, similar answers that I myself had, um, you know, arrived at. The uh, greater community of conscious consumers, some of them ardent viewers also. I read about seaweeds. Technically, they are also wild weedy greens, and some are also edible. They may be different, um, but the issues um, also are the same. So seaweeds too has been traditionally used by the uh, local people for several uses. But in the recent years, it has become quite popular in the market economy and hence the amount harvested increased. It is difficult to control how much is too much because it is a common resource. It, it's growing wild. No one has a say. To avoid overexploitation, first we as individual, then as a community must restrict ourselves. Over a large area, say a region, research scientists, conservationists, governments and all stakeholders together need to proactively decide to set boundaries so that the wild ones can survive. 
not just survive, grow, thrive. And what we take from them is only a little and does not affect the survival and its well-being. That is because our well-being and the well-being of the earth are integrally connected to that. There are some thumb rules or guidelines for sustainable foraging that I came across. A general rule is that to collect only 5%, say uh, the weeds um, are present in a certain area. So only in 25% of the area, you're allowed to forage. Within that 25% of the area that is that, that weed covers, they, they actually uh, may be present in patches. So the thumb rule is to collect only 5% of each patch. So, um, of course, this number will change with the different kind of, uh, you know, plants, how widespread it is, how common it is, etc. And or how, you know, quickly it regenerates. But that means it, it needs all those who pick to have and hold the knowledge, sort of have a common code of conduct. And of course, as I was even telling all this, I was uh, wondering that where to even have this knowledge and uh, collectively, uh, you know, this geographical knowledge, like where exactly this weed occurs, what area total. And when you say 25 percent of that area, how do we determine that? So all these are actually pretty knowledge based uh, information, uh, which we seldom have. So it's better to be cautious. Some species are more vulnerable um, to overharvest than others and requires more careful management. Uh, for example, Shatavari, you know, the, um, uh, which, which grows around here quite a lot. Um, and it's asparagus, Indian asparagus. This plant, because we harvest the roots, so obviously, you know, it involves you know, digging up and the entire plant is taken out. So unless, and Shatavari is a, um, is a very well used uh, medicinal plant. So if you actually harvest a lot of Shatavari, basically we are taking out the plants. So there will be no uh, scope of regeneration. Even abundant species, species like that should be harvested in moderation to ensure species persistence and limited food waste. This is especially possible when one is not, um, you know, when one is not picking for oneself only, but for others, there is a great possibility of food, of, of, of foraging more, of harvesting more, because there's a guesswork involved, a tendency to take a little more than necessary to so that it is sufficient. And we end up actually taking a little more. So each each time a little more and little more it it, it could compounds, with the exception of harvesting roots when the entire plant is pulled out. In fact, I insist that um, you shouldn't you shouldn't take the whole plant out. Not only that, I insist that you should only take the part you need directly from the plant. Uh, what I mean. It is like, for example, for Mantakali, Solanum nigrum or Solanum americanum, you do not need to pick the stalks. You can simply harvest the leaves if the, if the leaves is what you are uh, eating. Of course, you may also harvest the ripe fruit when it is ready. But in case of leaves, for example, even a handful can be um, you know, enough for making wonderful nutritious soup. No need to pick an entire stalk of plant. Notice um, when we, we seek actually those recipes which requires much less amount of wild greens when we actually pick it by ourselves because we know how much time it takes and how much care it takes to pick them. So we actually seek out those recipes which doesn't uh, require too much and it is very nutritious, but at the same time, it doesn't waste it anything. It is not about eating. It is because um, it be, it's because of the nutrients and the micronutrients they contain. It is about having a relationship, about care. 
So shouldn't a restaurant, eatery or a community kitchen cook wild greens then? Sure, they should. They actually should, uh, not only could, because um, it is a way of also informing others, actually initiating others. So, um, but the mean should be pop-up restaurants, that is occasionally once in a while, to celebrate bounty, sometimes after the rains, to share and to inspire others uninitiated. Do you think the same way? Let me know. I'll see you again next week. Until then, stay well and stay safe.